So next what I needed to do was place two 12 volt deep cycle batteries on the battery rack. In order to accomplish this I needed to disassemble a few components on the frame. Next I placed the battery enclosures inside the frame to get an idea of what modifications I needed to make. I soon discovered that I needed to cut off the enclosure handles in order for both of the enclosures to fit in the battery rack. Once the handles were cut, the enclosures fit perfectly. Next I placed the enclosure lid on top of the base to see if any modifications needed to be made to the lid. I soon saw that in order to make the lid fit, I will have to trim off some of the edges. Once all the modifications were done for the battery enclosures, the enclosures fit nice and tight. Next I placed the actual 12 volt batteries inside the enclosures to make sure everything fit correctly. Next I removed the batteries to attach some copper wire to the battery terminals temporarily. In the final stages of the build I properly hook up these battery connections just in case you're wondering. To prevent short circuits from occurring I place electric tape on the ends of the connections. Next I place my batteries back into the battery rack. Next I used a voltmeter to make sure I was receiving roughly 12 volts from the ends of my connections. Afterwards I began to reassemble the frame. Next I began working on attaching my electronics enclosure box to the frame.
first I positioned the enclosure so that it was centered with the frame and marked where my holes needed to be. After I drilled my holes, I could mark where my holes needed to be on the enclosure. Since other electronics would be in the enclosure, I used some nylon screws and nuts to secure the enclosure to the frame to help prevent any short circuits from occurring. Next, to secure the enclosure to the frame even more, I drilled two center holes. Here I use some long nylon screws as well as some wing nuts. If needed, using these wing nuts will allow me to quickly unscrew the enclosure from the bottom of the frame without any additional tools. After the enclosure was secured, I began to work on the motor and battery connections. First I saw I needed to extend the length of my motor connections. After extending my motor connections, I exposed only one fourth of an inch of the copper wire which is recommended when connecting the wires to the motor controller. I next hooked up my two 12 volt batteries in series for a total of 24 volts. I will also be placing a diagram on my website for those who are unsure about how to connect two 12 volt batteries in series to receive 24 volts. Here I'm testing the voltage to ensure that I'm receiving 24 volts or above. In the next video, I will explain my process for hooking up the motor controller. Hello guys and ladies, that does conclude this video. Now I just want to take a break from editing video and say a couple of things before I end this particular video. If you find these videos interesting or helpful, a way that you can show me that is by liking a video or leaving comments below the particular video that you found interesting or helpful. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, or you can share with others that you think may find this particular video interesting. So any of those things or many more or will actually show me that you guys appreciate all the time and effort that I'm putting into these videos and it would also boost my motivation to spend more effort and time with trying to make these more informative and trying to get them out on YouTube and on the web a lot quicker so with that said I will see you in the next video